Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a, you know, reasonably nice Florida, I don't know what the hell day it is. I think it's Wednesday. It's a Wednesday morning. It's not quite as cool or breezy as I'd want it to be for, you know, how it's been, but it's good enough. And, uh, you know, it's certainly not terribly humid and I'm not dripping as per usual. So, you know, the decent Florida... Uh, at least southern Naples, Florida season continues. It hasn't been bad so far. We've got fingers crossed, and uh, with any luck, we won't get some sort of a uh, the unexpected, oh, the heat wave's coming, you know? It's going to be a bad winter. We haven't seen that yet. So far, so good, and uh, things could be a lot worse. So uh, we're going to go ahead and keep going forward with that. And look, I'm here today to do a quick take a quick take on this 2019 Ford Mustang Shelby GT350. Uh, it's a car from Dave the Wholesaler. Very, very nice guy. Very supportive. Helps me out all the time by giving me stuff. Not necessarily in my wheelhouse, but, you know, undeniably cool and undeniably car guy uh, type material. And this one is no different. Uh, in fact, this one he's not going to wholesale. Uh, it's too nice. So it's going to go and bring a trailer, apparently. Uh, it's already slated, photographed up, waiting for them. You know, of course, it's interminable waiting for them to start an auction. Uh, but uh, that's where this thing's at, and it'll be up there soon. So uh, if you have an interest in this thing, keep an eye on BAT. Um, and look, while I'm not a huge fan of modern cars, I can't deny that this one has been pretty pretty amazing to drive and pretty fun. Uh, it is, without question, a faithful evolution of the original muscle cars of the 1960s. You know, I know technically a Mustang is a pony car, but when they put the big engines in them and whatnot, they became muscle cars. And, you know, I, I'm sure someone will fight me on that, but what the hell, that's what I'm going with. But it has what muscle cars have, and that is a screaming V8, uh, a manual gearbox, and the ability to turn its rear tires into a sticky pile of goo. You know, it's a genre um, that that is so near and dear to the hearts of American car guys. It really is. And in the genre, this car is not alone, but it will be soon. And that's such a tragedy. Uh, the Charger and Challenger, you know, all that Hemi stuff, the Hellcats, the Red Eyes, the whatever the hell they are, all that's been phased out. That ended in the 2023 model year for Chrysler, and they're going on to do all the crap that modern car companies do. Uh, the Camaro, it's last year, uh, you know, even for the hot rod versions, the ZL1 and whatnot, it, 2024 that's going to be it then the camaro's cut and at that point the mustang will stand alone as the last the last real v8 proper traditional american muscle car and you know to ford's credit they have no plans to kill it they say they're going to keep producing you know v8 mustangs for as long as they can uh you know the the, the president of design he had a gave it he said he can look we can't promise we'll have them in 300 years well what the hell can you have in 300 years I suspect it's going to be a disappointment and they're not going to last as long as we all hope they do. But at least for the moment, Ford is sticking to their guns. Not unlike the way they did with those, you know, big Mark Fives at the end of the 70s when they said, we're going to keep building this shit when everyone else gave it up. Uh, and uh, to their credit, they're going to keep going with it for a while. There's no definitive plans to stop building a V8 Mustang. But the truth is, and I think we all know it, that it's the end of an era. You know, this modern muscle car <sighs> resuscitation revival that probably began in the early 80s, even though, you know, kids today would laugh at our horsepower numbers back then. Uh, it's coming to an end, and it's going to be replaced. And honestly, I couldn't give two craps if electric cars are faster, you know, by virtue, the cheating virtue of their inherent 
motor design with, you know, it's instant on torque uh, because they're about as thrilling as plain tofu with the side of Novocaine. I mean, nothing puts me to sleep faster than an electric car, even at full acceleration. And again, this morning on the way here to Peter's house, uh, I was just randomly videoing and some Tesla next to me thought I was racing. So he, you know, leapt off the light and it was very quick, undoubtedly, but even watching it put me to sleep. It just is you know, it's a friggin' toaster without a V8 scream of rage, without thundering exhaust, without the tire smoke like a New England fog. You're just left with a very fast golf cart. I mean, there's no passion. Uh, the senses aren't satisfied. Imagine watching a race of electric cars. I mean, you could listen to a you know, the Bach concerto at the same time and pick up all the little violin parts. There's no sound, there's no screaming, there's no fury. And uh, that is something that will be sorely missed, at least by dinosaurs like me. And I think a lot of other people out there that, you know, the, the electric cars, I don't, again, care how fast they get. They just don't satisfy the senses. The senses are not satisfied uh, without all the oral <clears throat> without all the, you know, the music going in your ears from the big engines. It just doesn't work. And, you know, ditto the way that V8s have been replaced with turbo V6s and V6s have been replaced with turbo 4s and so on and so forth. You know, all began to satisfy government requirements and uh, little Greta Thunberg. I mean... It's just devastating to me. I cannot believe that you can go out and buy a Chevy Silverado with a four-cylinder in it or an American spec Mercedes E-Class with a four-cylinder. I mean, I don't care what their horsepower and torque figures are. I really don't. The existence alone is a crime against humanity. It's, it's against everything that proper civilization holds dear and stands for. The concept is revolting. An F-150 with a four-cylinder, a Sierra 1500, with a four-cylinder. I mean, it's just disgusting. And frankly, I blame women for all of it. All of it. At some stage, we screwed up. We, you know, let them get in command. We let them do stuff. And now you, you have the results. And I hope everybody's happy. Uh, and I hope you guys cling to cars like this Mustang now. Thank God for this Mustang right now. You know, this one, not the stupid electric SUV with a horse on the back. For now, thank Christ, there are still cars like this one. And uh, I really, really appreciate that. Oh, God. The GT350 is a legendary name in Mustang and muscle car history. I mean, the first was built in the first year of the Mustang, so it's got quite a history. In 1965, it was a collaboration between Ford and uh, a guy named Carroll Shelby. Uh, I did a video the other day on that Cobra replica and sort of went over the history of Shelby and, you know, who he was and how he's been such a benefit to, you know, guys everywhere. But uh, in 1965, Ford wanted Shelby to take the Mustang, which there were some accusations of it being a secretary's car, you know, not a serious street car. And uh, they wanted him to give it credibility. And he immediately set out to do that. Uh, so he built the GT350s, many in fastback form, uh, basically for speed on the street, which they were great at. Uh, and also for dominating B production SEC, uh, CCA racing in the GT350R form, which they did for three years and, you know, kicked everybody's ass. The guy definitely had a gift for making cars go faster. And, you know, fast forward through all the history, which we talked about, I'll link that video below, but, you know, decades of... Mustang, Shelby or otherwise, and the GT350, this one, returned again in 2019 in both regular and R form. Both are pretty radical. The R is a little more radical. Uh, they had a sizable price tag. I mean, we're talking almost 70 grand, but you did get quite a bit for your money out of a $70,000 Mustang. Uh, Basically, they have a very unique engine architecture. They have a flat crank. It's called a Voodoo engine by Ford. And it shares, there's a GT500, which came out the next year, which is real king of the hill stuff. You're talking, you know, Ford's top of the top. Uh, but it didn't have some of the technology that went into this 
uh, one year earlier GT350, particularly the flat crank, high revving. I could get into the difference between a standard crank and a flat crank, but it's tedious and boring, and I only understand part of it. But uh, more or less, the flat crank is almost a, a you know Euro supercar style, Ferrari, Lotus, that sort of thing. It makes an engine be very high and free revving because it reduces weight and counterbalance and that kind of thing. And this thing does have a shocking red line. Uh, but uh, anyway, for your money, you got that. You got that incredible engine. You got uh, brakes the size of manhole covers. You got radical looks with aero wings, uh, air dams, canards splitters, diffusers, ducts, vents, racing stripes. I mean, the thing absolutely looks the part. Uh, underneath, you got four-wheel independent suspension, which was a great addition to the Mustang uh, by the time, I think this is the sixth generation rolled along. And uh, you've got the menacing house. And look at the manhole covers you have for brake discs. That's the rear. Uh, and more than anything, you've got the menacing howl of a screaming V8 engine coming out those four pipes at the back. I mean, if this car doesn't move you, you know, Chevy guy, Ford guy, it really doesn't matter. If it doesn't move you, then you might as well be drinking a Zima. You might as well. I mean, it just makes me sad. But anyway, look, the throwback styling on the inside and out is pretty tastefully done. Uh, you can see the segmented tail lamps. That's a Mustang feature. The fastback is a Mustang feature. Uh, you know, the side indentations with the front vents. Very, very cool. Big ground effects there on the bottom. Uh, getting to the front, you've got, you know, a resemblance to early Mustang lights. All this homage, you know, to a car that was made when the men used slide rulers to design things that would blow shit up spectacularly. And with the full approval and support of the American populace, which of course that's long gone, there's just no hippie anywhere in this thing. Uh, it's just buzz cuts and short sleeve dress shirts with nondescript ties and khaki trousers. And uh, I can tell that I'm just really going to miss this era when it's gone. But, you know, look, I, I have to love the guy who owned this thing, who can appreciate somebody who sees a 2019 Ford Mustang G3, uh, GT350 with its 5.2 liter voodoo flat crank engine, uh, 8250 red line, 526 horsepower, 429 foot pounds of torque, and then says, you know, gee, I wonder what it would be like if it was supercharged. So, <laughs> I mean, Oh uh, boy, you know, I don't know what the future is going to hold and I mean, are people going to put bigger electric motors in or, you know, we're going to all appreciate the guy who put this extra special battery in his Tesla to make it one second faster. It just sounds like, you know, numb deadness to me. And frankly, I'm glad I won't be around for too much of it. But uh, look, I'm going to pause it there, get my crap together, and then we're going to have a look closer on this thing, then go for a drive. Uh, I did tear up Peter's driveway a little earlier. I parked a car over it in case he walked out. I'm hoping he won't see it, but there are some Goodyear pilot marks there that uh, hopefully the rain washes away soon. Uh, but it was fun doing it, and uh, frankly, I'd do it again. So anyway, let me pause there for a minute. All right, so let's have a look at this thing a bit closer, and I'll just very quickly do the trunk. There you see that uh, Shelby snake badge with the GT350. Very, very usable trunk in these cars, you know. Uh, obviously, egress is a little bit awkward with the taillights there and the high threshold and whatnot. But once you get over that, you can fit all kinds of crap in there, including infants and toddlers, with a zero issue at all. Uh, you know, obviously, if you have some toddlers, infants, and your dog with you. The infants are going to go back here. And uh, when they do, they're going to be pretty happy. I mean, you know, granted, this isn't the softest carpet in the world. It's kind of that gray, you know, battleship kind of stuff, but it's soft enough. And I don't think it's going to chafe them too bad unless you're really getting on the power. Uh, here's a big subwoofer, what used to be called the shaker in these cars, now by Bang & Olufsen, which we'll get into in a minute because that just makes me laugh. Uh, but anyway, very usable trunk. And from the looks of things, those rear seats uh, do fold forward. Uh, so frankly, this thing would make a terrific family car. No question at all.
have a look under the hood. And of course, this is where it just becomes incredibly amusing. I just absolutely love some people. Some people. Very few, but some. All right, so here it is. What appears to be, you know, a very sort of nondescript and neutral engine bay, you know, as per as usual, it actually is concealing this giant bolt-on Whipple suit. I don't know how giant it is, but the hell with it. It's a big roots blower that's bolted to the top. Uh, it costs about 10 grand. I looked them up last night. Uh, and it's it's a bolt-on affair. I don't know if a home mechanic could do it, but it didn't look terribly difficult. Uh, you upgrade the injectors, you bolt this thing on uh, with 93 octane and only 10 pounds of boost the thing moves from its 500 plus horsepower to 875 according to claims and from its 429 foot pounds of torque to 660 so it becomes an absolute friggin monster uh, under the hood of this car and i love it i love the cat again who you know drove the thing and said ah, it's not enough let's let's just make it more and uh and there it is and it's more so um otherwise you've got you know again your controllable suspension up front your actually i don't know if this is controllable it might just be standard hard firm the r is much firmer than this one i'm sure it does go into modes they all do which ones don't uh but either way it's a mustang with four-wheel independent you know big ass brakes six-speed manual gearbox and almost 900 horsepower under the hood and i can't imagine what's not to like about that uh, and here is that five two liter voodoo engine with all the uh, cams and the flat crank and the crazy sound that's almost european and the popping and the uh, just absolutely love it. Flows through an exhaust that's controllable to make it louder and more obnoxious, which I did. And, um, you know, again, I really am more of a Chevy guy than a Ford guy. Uh, but I can't appreciate not just what this car is, but where it came from, the evolution of it, and how it's frankly probably what's going to be the ultimate incarnation of the original internal combustion muscle car. Cars like this, you know, this, the, the, and then the Chargers and Challengers and, of course, the Camaros and, you know, the, 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 this is going to be it. This is our last hurrah, guys, and then we're done and the ladies take over and it's going to be all Bud Light parties and, uh, you know, tampons with wings. So enjoy it while we can. There it is. This is it. I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to get all my crap in the trunk and uh, then we're going to go for a spin. So bear with me one moment. All right, so let's do this. You see, we've got our key with the snake. Like, you know, all modern keys, you can just keep it in your pocket and use all the touch stuff, you know, which is fine. Uh, Mustang wise, I love the frameless glass again. Uh, you know, that's proper for a coupe from the uh, 60s or today. It would be nice if these rear windows went down, you know, without a pillar there, but eh, you get what you get. And I imagine all the modern safety standards, you're just not going to be able to do shit like that anymore. Uh, you know, there is a lot of hard plastic in this car and obviously some soft plastic. Uh, and there's some, you know, complaints about that in a, you know, 60 plus almost $70,000 car. But at its core, it is a Mustang. And what the hell are you going to do? Design, you know, different panels and dashes and all that for, you know, you, you just can't. But all in all, it's pretty nice and tight. You know, modern quality control has made it not instantly fall apart when, uh, you know, the sun hits it, and that's all very good stuff. Uh, this thing has just 14,000 miles, so frankly, it should be in nice shape. And despite the extra muscle under the hood, uh, it really doesn't look like it was beat up too bad by whoever the hell put it together. Uh, you see the Ford Performance skid plates there, on the uh, rockers, uh, you know, your backseat passengers are actually not in terrible shape. Uh, you know, you could even have legs and still sit back there. Um, looks fairly comfortable. The Canadians are going to be chipper enough. They got a little place to put their guns. They're able to pull this if they need to escape and get out. And uh, otherwise, you know, I think they'll be happy enough. <coughs> and now I can't get the seat back. That's wonderful. 
Ah, there we go. Okay, and it comes standard with Recaros, which I believe these are, and uh, then you could upgrade them to um, some sort of leather buckets, which are supposed to be a little bit more comfy. Either way, I think the Recaros are fine, so, all right. Sitting in this thing, here you go with your sort of retro throwback dash, you know, with the two cowls up here, which is very Mustang-esque. Uh, you got your two big gauges in front of you. Uh, you got your, of course, look at that, 8250 Redline. <laughs> that is just awesome for a V8. Reminds me of Formula One or something. You got a 200 mile an hour Speedo. Uh, I think it's limited to 155 or something, but I'm sure that could be removed. Uh, over here, you've got your light control. All light controls kind of look like Mercedes now. Uh, you got your uh, memory seats, your locks, your windows, your power mirror. It's got blind spot, which of course every lady needs today. Uh, you got the sort of ultra suede racy type steering wheel with the centering ring and the flat bottom, which is all great. Uh, Multi-function display, which is a little bit too complex, but, you know, gives you the shit you need to, you know, control the car and set it up the way you want it. And of course the big snake emblem there in the front. Let's fire it up and get a little AC going. Oh God, again, that sound. Don't get used to it, kids. It ain't gonna be around for much longer. Put the seatbelt on, and then we'll go through a couple features. I should really put my seatbelt on before I start filming, because it's a pain in the ass. Alright, let me get a little bit of AC going. Let's see if we can figure that out real quick. There's auto. Fan speed of three, that shouldn't be too noisy. Uh, maybe a little bit, we'll go down to two. Uh, okay, here in the center, you've got, um, I'm gonna turn that off for a minute. You've got uh, your accelerometer, it's set up to right now, your, you know, G meter or whatnot. Uh, you can start going through uh, different, um, uh, track apps as they get there to give you a status screen. Let's see what that's all about. Normal, uh, it tells you where you're at. Uh, sport, I think sport is over here. There we go, steering feel. It's electric in this car. We can go comfort, normal, or sport. We're gonna go with the sporty steering wheel feel for the moment. Uh, let's go back. Your accelerometer, your acceleration timer, brake performance, line lock. Uh, that's interesting. I think what, we maybe have to turn on launch control for that. Well, that didn't do anything, but anyway, look, I'm not going to line lock anyway, because these aren't my $500 a piece tires, but line lock would essentially lock the front wheels, so you could just make the backs explode in a show of smoke. Uh, lap timer, launch control, uh, exhaust, if we want, uh, you see that little switch there with the exhaust on it? I hit that, you see exhaust mode normal, and there's sport. And it certainly does sound sporty. Uh, performance shift indicator, blah, blah, blah. We go back and you get gauges. You could have every conceivable ECM report between oil pressure, fuel ratios, you know, so on and so forth. That gives you a range. You get a digital speedometer, your tire pressure. You know, typical modern stuff, and we're just gonna keep the engine oil temperature there. Uh, over here, you've got your oil pressure gauge in the center stack, oil temperature, you got an eight inch touch screen, which seems a little dated now, but it's fine. Got some ZZ Top on. Love it, perfect song for this. Stereo controls, AC controls, you've got cool seats, which are nice. Uh, these are your hazards, that's your traction control off, which I'm gonna turn off, why the hell not? And uh, launch control, exhaust sound, USB, here's your six speed, you know, Getreg shifter. Uh, these uh, GT350s are all numbered. This one is chassis K1582, so all very cool stuff. And uh, you wouldn't be at home without your Shelby Snake GT350 embroidered floor mats. <sighs> the gurgling and burbling and... Uh, look at the vist out the hood with that big power bulge in the center. You got kind of knife-edged fenders, you know. Again, I'm not a Mustang guy, never really have been, but god damn do I like driving this car. Let's see if there's any old 
ladies with their hats on out here. I don't want to do anything too stupid, but let's give it a little bit of a launch in front of Peter's house and see how it goes. <laughs> oh, and in the back we have a smoke show. You know, again, I don't care about your 0 to 60 in 2 second Tesla. It is never going to be as fun as that. The, the audio from this car, the sound, the screech. Kids today just don't know what they're missing. They don't. If they're lusting after a car that's called a plaid, they just don't know what they're missing. Uh, the shifter is very short throw, feels nice and tight, uh, very easy to maneuver. Actually a very light clutch feel for a car with this kind of power, particularly if we're talking one that's been, you know, upgraded to almost 900. Um, you know, in this rev band, apparently the flat truck crank engine doesn't come alive till it gets over 4,000. In this, you know, two to 4,000 range, the thing is really docile. I mean, you could, you know, drive your wife to the opera and she wouldn't really know you were in a insane 900 horsepower muscle car, you know, she'd just think you were in the family truckster being very conscientious. Uh, the brakes are a little bit touchy to me, but I think that's, you know, part of the race setup. Holy shit! Man, is this thing quick! And there we have state troopers and sheriff's cars. Hopefully you didn't see that. But uh, he hasn't turned around yet. Um, man, I mean, it is a cacophony of insane sounds. God, the steering's crazy in this thing, in the sport mode. You really have to keep your hands on it. It is a cacophony of amazing sounds, amazing G-forces. It is a thrill for the senses in a way that you do not get in, um, you know, never mind electric cars, but even just in most of the cars you see driving around, even the ones that purport to be sports cars. Uh, these modern high-end muscle cars with all the power and all the insanity, uh, they are a unique and lovely moment in automotive production uh, that's basically over. You know, this is it. And I have a feeling they're going to just stay very high in value because of it. And, you know, this is going to be the Barrett Jackson. It already is to some extent, but I mean, this is the one that's going to be, uh, you know, very collectible for years to come. And and people will look at it almost like a museum piece and say this is how much fun people are having, you know, in 2023. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there it is. So look, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you very much. I know, again, haven't had too many videos out. I think this has been a true short take. I don't think this is going to be a 40-minute video, and uh, that's a good thing. I have some more stuff coming up. Uh, Auto House has a pagoda that I think I'm going to do. Uh, they, th they might be getting in an El Dorado that looked exciting, and uh, we'll see what else is on the horizon. Uh, otherwise, again, really appreciate the look the views uh, yeah and um, we will see you with the next one